Hi, Facebook. Welcome to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Today, we're going to be talking about the spring market and all that it is bringing. Yeah, a little crazy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you guys ready? Let's do it. Ready. Cool. Uh, stick around after the podcast portion for the after show, and we'll dive into everything we aren't able to cover during that piece. Fantastic. Never not had something to say. Then, exactly. You know? There's always yeah, been lots so of stuff. extra stuff to say. So. All right. Here we go. Are you thinking about buying or selling a house or just want to know what might be going on with one of your biggest investments? Then come hang out with us for a little while. Hi, I'm Kirk Duckwall, and welcome to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show, sponsored by Bricks Real Estate, Network Title, Eric Bloomstrand and Chad Preview with Bell Bank Mortgage, and James Tolson with Country Financial. If you have any questions for us, make sure you give us a call at 651-303-0019. Again, 651-303-0019. You can also check us out anytime and check out all the wonderful publications we have at BricksTwinCities.com. One of those we're going to be talking about today, which is the BRICS report, which has tons of great information about what's going on with the Twin Cities real estate market. Um, that said, today's show, we're going to be discussing the spring market and uh, what is going on out there. Um, it is the craziest spring market I've ever experienced in my career. It's nuts out there right now. It is. Yeah, it, absolutely. Um, you know, I've said it before, and I'll say it again for sellers. If you wait until it's green, you're going to miss out on some green. That's right. Uh, the, mar the market is insane, and it has to do with, with very low inventory. I mean, historically low inventory. Um, we are basically haven't seen numbers like this since pre-2005. That's the farthest back I have, I have data on. Yeah. So yeah. – um, it is it is a market that is is moving. <laughs> it's moving very very quickly. Right. So if it and and that said, it creates this amazing opportunity um, to take anybody who's willing to dive in as a seller and and be proactive. Now again, you don't want to rush your listing no. onto to market, but we're still seeing quite a bit of that though, which is yeah, interesting. Yeah, there 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 are segments of the market where people. They, they just don't – they think it's so good they don't need to do anything. No. And they're, they're losing out on money. They are. Yeah. They are. Um, taking the time to prepare, it's okay to have a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. That said, to skip things can be detrimental. And, and you know, we did the show a few weeks ago about the Smart Seller book. Um, and, and so anybody who, who wants that, uh, make sure you hit up our, our website, Bricks Twin Cities, uh, under publications. We got the Smart Seller, the Smart Home Buyer, the Bricks Report, everything mm -hmm. everything we talked about on this show is it's there. the books on real estate. It yeah. is. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Literally wrote them. Kirk did. <laughs> I wrote the book on selling homes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it's crazy, um, and, and that can create – frustrations actually surprisingly for um both buyers and sellers out there um you know if if you're not ready to be out of your house for a majority of the day if you're priced right on the days that you're on market um that can be a little stressful yeah i'm telling my sellers to you know take a weekend off go, go take a, a no staycation kidding. somewhere <laughs> you know yeah just get, get out of your house for the whole weekend because it's going to be nuts yeah what about I mean, the so friendly pets yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean I, 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 it, we know people have work schedules, and you know we usually we can we can plan that. And, you know if we can find the days off that you have to to put the listing on around that time. But I mean a lot of people have weekends off, mm -hmm. so we just put the listing on the market on a a Thursday evening or Thursday, uh, and have showing start you know one day later, Saturday or Friday evening or yeah. something like that and now you can up and leave for the weekend and by the time you come back y if you price it well I and you're in that median sale price range you probably will be sitting with one if not multiple offers probably multiple you know i just put one on the market um in Bloomington 700 square feet uh eight offers wow. in, in a couple days. But, you know, I followed all the steps yep. of the book that I wrote. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, I did the pre-market. I built up the, the yep. interest in the property, let people book up the show, you know, mm -hmm. book the showings ahead of time. Um, Have you done a show on Clear Cooperation? 
Um, no, not really. Well, yet. That'd be something to touch on it, one of these it, shows. It, it would be. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. The cha- changes in. Um, yeah. Pre list and all pre- of that. Yeah. You know? I actually think it's great though. I think it's oh, fantastic. Oh my gosh, there are so many more coming soon's on that. Yes. Which is like, oh, that's that's great. And it's great for buyers. Uh-huh. It's great for buyers. Uh-huh. The peace of mind. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay, so, you know, as a seller, when you approach a market like this, if you truly want to maximize that green in your pocket, don't necessarily rush to accept an offer unless it's real sweet. Oh, it's got to be perfect. Right. Yeah. Like, all right, cash offer, limited inspection, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hit the closing <laughs> date you want. Yeah, you know, if, right. if it's got all of that, I can understand taking it, you mm-hmm. know, without a doubt. But, yeah, there's – there's with the number of showings that we're having, the low inventory, it's worth letting at least a few days worth of showings take place. Yeah, I mean, it was it – <laughs> No, well, it's competition. The, well, with the right. one I got the eight offers on, I mean, I got calls day one, and they're like, so when are you reviewing? And I said, right. on Monday, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And, and then I, I did say, well – Unless it's really sweet. And they go, well, what do you mean by that? Eh, give me 10K over cash, I'll start considering. <laughs> 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 you know, maybe maybe talking to the seller about, about not. So what ended up happening was it, it um, as each offer came in, as usual, they start going up and then the mm-hmm. other ones that were lower. And by the way, buyers out there, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I do say, hey, if, if you like the home, put an offer in. But there, at, at a certain point, if an agent's telling you there's eight offers or five offers, if you're going in under list price, <laughs> you are fuel to the fire to make it sell for even more. You're right. you're actually hurting yourself. Totally, it's better to wait. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, that's a strategy I've I've used uh, a couple times now, is I let it go through the multiple offer deadline, hmm. and then I submit an offer as a backup, saying you know I I don't want to sit there and be fuel to your fire, but I explain all the positives about my offer mm-hmm. and and how they're not going to nitpick because you know we felt that it was going way above whatever. I it was love worth. writing backup offers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, it should be about one in five times. Um, it's going to come back around. Yes, whether it comes back around to you or not. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yes, I right. would say about one in five. Yeah, somewhere around there anyway. But, yeah, they're coming back on the market. If there's another offer that is close enough, that's attractive enough, those sellers can look at the current that they're having, they're having inspection issues, whatever it is. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'd be happy to work with someone else. Well, and keep in mind, I mean, a lot of a lot of the offers in the pools are FHA offers. Mm-hmm. Uh, with nothing wrong with that. But, you know, if you're a strong backup offer, mm-hmm. they're going to come back and, and talk to you probably. Yeah. Definitely. Um, they're going to remember you too right right yeah um so give it time as sellers give yourself a little time on the market to really get those offers in and and talk with your agent about what are your goals i mean sometimes it's not necessarily about the most money it's, it's mm-hmm. about the best closing date that's right there's a lot more to negotiate on in an offer than just the price right, right. um people lo- people are short-sighted on that well, and short um, like agents sh- are short sighted. Yeah, I should say. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, yeah. When you start laying it out for buyers and sellers, the options that are available out there, mm-hmm. um, there there's so much that that agents aren't bringing forth. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, to to look at everything on the table and what achieves your goals, right? It's not dollars and cents. It, ultimately, I ended up passing on a two twenty five offer and went. For a two fifteen that gave us the appraisal guarantee. Yep, there you go. The, and, and here's the thing: I valued that house out uh, a, a month prior to putting it on the market, and the closest comps I could find were one eighty to one ninety. Now, right before we found one that one ninety nine that just went pending, so that gave me okay, let's do it at two and watch watch mm-hmm. what happens. And and so two twenty five, there's just, I just no way it's, yeah, it's going to appraise. Gonna raise, yeah. Right. So why? It, again, being short sighted, if if I would have gone for that, I would have been end up hurting my client yep. properly. Um, so now now buyers, you got to be really careful this time of year because of that short inventory. It's real easy to fall into the overpaying trap. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. um, I mean you just you have to be creative. You yeah. have to get creative with your offers. Right. It, it, yeah. You you want to start implementing protections mm-hmm. um, that can prevent you. I know it feels like oh i have to go up to here to get it and sometimes it's more about meaning your word 
than it is about highest dollar. And so what I mean about that is, you know, something like that appraisal guarantee mm -hmm. can can be huge yes. um, to uh, say, hey, you know what? I yeah, we're going a little over, but I'm willing to back this and. And you were mentioning even if they don't have the money, Joe, like a way the agent can help so out on So when we do the appraisal guarantees, you know, it's most of the time it's the buyer's funds. But yeah. I am more than happy to put my own funds into that as well because, you know, I explained a few buyers have been like, well, why would you be willing to do that? Well, you know, to be perfectly honest, if we get this one won, I don't have to show you any more homes. <laughs> we don't have to start <laughs> over, you know. So yeah. I can go on and work with the next client, you know. I'll do that. I'm more than willing to give up $1,500, $2,000 for that. And it's amazing peace of mind for the seller for the listing agent for everybody involved they're right. just, they're so happy to see that the buyer's agent has skin in the game well right. and and we're, we're not going to do this if we think it's not going to appraise exactly. right we, we, we want <laughs> we, uh, yeah we're saying we'll back it but we want we want to know the values there for you yes. too i right? ran i ran my numbers i All know right. where it's going to sure. be we're going to sure. sure. take a comments. quick commercial break guys um we'll jump back into this and like uh escalation clauses and whatnot we'll be right back go welcome back to the twin cities real estate show on am 950 today we're talking about the crazy spring market out there and doing a little market update i'm talking about things you can do as, as sellers to protect yourself or, i'm sorry as buyers to protect yourself and and sellers to take the most advantage of of this market uh we kind of left off with doing like an appraisal guarantee mm -hmm. um and how you know that will show that you really mean the offer that you're putting out there mm -hmm. as, as a buyer yeah you're willing to back it you're willing to back it you know the buyer who who, who wrote for 25 over list price they weren't willing to back it so it means nothing right, right. to you know right. to us um, another thing that they can do is, is, is an escalation clause, yep. which I think is great. And, and, and sellers out there, um, this is a good thing to see come across. And, and I, I'm, I'm amazed that some agents don't like these things. Uh, like. You know, it's, it's in the benefit of the sellers as well. Right. Because if you write an escalation clause and you win with that escalation clause, you know that there's another offer that is right behind you. Right. right. So when it comes to the inspection period, you can't be asking for a ton of fixes because there's someone right behind you. Right, right. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, it's setting up for success with that. I mean, for, for the buyers, too, because, you know, a buyer doesn't have to make the random guess then of, mm -hmm. oh, how much over do I need to do to get this? And, and then, you know, end up spending five, seven, ten over uh, – what, yeah, what it could have with, with without an escalation clause you win and that's super exciting but the very next thought is how much did i overpay <laughs> you know and then, and then it's then you go into inspection and they're asking for everything to be fixed to try and recoup some of that oh yeah, yeah. absolutely and that's yep. the mindset yep that mm -hmm. is 100 percent the mindset um and honestly um i, I, I meant to say this uh, uh, regarding that appraisal guarantee piece is um, that is a way for a, a buyer to save money too. So we're talking about saving money on, on the escalation clause by not going extensively over whatever else might be there. Mm -hmm. But the appraisal guarantee, that you know, we picked a lower offer because we knew they were willing to back it, right? right. So, mm -hmm. so if you have a $10,000 spread, I mean, I'll pose this question to you, Joe. If you have a $10,000 spread from, from list price to your maximum offer, but the one that's only 5000 over gives you the appraisal guarantee, which one do you take? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, you know, the one that's 10000 over, you have the $5,000 over one to be able to show to that appraiser, someone who's also willing to pay that. True. I mean, I, went, I always yeah. give all offers to the, uh, to the appraiser. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, to show, show, to justify, show, you know. show value. Yeah. Um, Maybe I should have given a bigger spread, but I mean, I, I always I go for the one that has the the, the guarantee. Definitely, you definitely. Know, um, that that they they're willing to do it. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's get into so, so, to some of the numbers of, of what's actually it's crazy, happening. Crazy numbers. Here. Um, okay, so showings per week per listing. This is that heartbeat of the market. We're at seven point six nine for the median sale price range, two hundred to four hundred thousand in Minneapolis St. Paul area that they're getting, on average, 7.69 showings per week. 
Okay. That's that's a fast moving market. That's huge. Um, and, and I almost feel like that number. I, I I understand that number, but so many agents were listing properties Wednesday or Thursday. It's the most popular day to list. Yeah. So most of those homes are going under contract Saturday or Sunday. So when we're saying seven point six nine per week, sometimes that's not exactly a good a you know a number because it's not, they're not getting a full week of showings most of the time. Right. Right. No well, point. yeah. I mean, it's like I looked at this house the other day, and I think they had forty two showings right. in 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 one right. day. <laughs> wow. Right. So, um, wow. yeah. It, it, again, that key never went back again, in the lockbox. This, <laughs> <box. Yeah. laughs> this this is an wow. average, but this is up twenty four percent at the same time last year. It uh, five point five. Here's the crazy part. There was 700 more showings in Minneapolis and St. Paul um, th- uh, this last week over uh, the previous year, but only 24 more houses on the market. Wow. That blows my wow. mind. Yeah. So that is one fast Competition moving. is fierce. Yeah. So if you're in the market to purchase a home, I would highly recommend being prepared. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Well, I mean, you. I look at it two ways. There's 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 Friday houses and there's Monday houses. Yep. Okay, right. A Friday house is this thing's priced well, and if we want a chance at it, we have to write the offer on Friday, the day that it came onto the market. Or wow, this one's priced way too high. Let's wait until Monday see <laughs> to happens. see what yeah. happens. Right. So maybe write the backup <laughs> offer. At that point. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, it's uh, you got to be the er- early bird or the vulture, one or the yeah. other. Right. Um, Okay, month supply uh, is at is down eleven percent. Um, so that basically means how long would it take for all the houses in the Twin Cities to sell? And it's one point six months right now. If you were to just like Crazy. let them go, yeah. It, it Holy smokes! A- and this is this is part. Of it's that inventory, right? Mm-hmm. That really low inventory is, is playing a huge part. Supply in this. and demand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, total total homes uh, down twelve percent. We talked about this historically low inventory, seventy eight hundred listings roughly on wow. the market. I would love that to see the numbers on those for you how know by ma- summertime it's usually like almost double. That. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, yeah. yeah. I'd like to see how many of those homes are below three hundred fifty thousand, even. You know, that would that's be that's interesting because I feel like the majority of those, yeah, the number you can pull up because I feel like a lot of the homes. Are that are sitting longer are you know over three fifty over four hundred thousand anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, the number of homes under three hundred and fifty in January. Um, so it looks like uh, about three thousand five hundred. Oh, oh, oh wow, wow. Yeah, that is crazy for competition. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable, it's unbelievable. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that's in like the 16 county metro. Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah. So some interesting data points. The days on market. Now, now we're we're talking about these these super fast days on market, but there are still and and this like as a buyer, these are the homes you want to be fight, fighting for. Mm-hmm. There are good homes out there that just price themselves too high, yep. or mm-hmm. they have really poor marketing mm-hmm. and they look bad online yep. but look great in person yep i can't tell you how m- often i bring a buyer to a home that maybe i pulled out of their recycling bin and they go look at it and they're like oh i gotta start taking second looks at these houses right, right? Mm. A- and you can tell a buyer i can even show example pictures but until they experience it for themselves mm-hmm. it can be hard sometimes i think that might be in our uh, buyer book right something along those lines yes yeah it is <laughs> P- pictures tell a thousand lies yeah. pictures tell a thousand lies um so i mean these these days on market even um all property types uh you know the average is around 40 something yeah. or 40 days on market so i mean there are homes that are sitting yep. out on the market longer um Here's here's one uh, homes priced between 190 and 250 are receiving 99.9 percent of their list price <laughs> on average. What? Um, uh, are showings those depending is at 15 right now, so 15 showings, uh, and usually they they have an offer. So if you're not one of the first 15 through the door, basically, you may just not even have an opportunity at it. Good luck. Like you say, with, you know, the one you were talking about having 42 showings in one day. Right. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. So something I want to make sure we we touch on in the last couple minutes is is I I mentioned 
the Bricks Report, right? And, and that's um, the annual magazine that we put out. Um, those watching on Facebook are seeing us uh, showing <laughs> off as hand models <laughs> with this right now. Um, but this is a, 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 a free magazine that you can download uh, at BricksTwinCities.com, and it's got tons of, of uh, just kind of fun stuff in it, uh, but also a bunch of market data on Great almost data. every suburb uh, and city in the in the Twin Cities area. Um, One of the best real estate publications in the nation, I'd say. In the world. By far. <laughs> <laughs> At least in the Milky Way. That's right. Um, <laughs> maybe not Andromeda. I don't know. That's a little bigger ga uh, galaxy. Hey, so reel it in. That's far, um, <laughs> far, far out there. <laughs> okay, but I wanted to bring up some interesting uh um, data points. So, like, uh, I, I highlighted some some of the, the cities, like Cottage Grove, uh, uh, median sale price up ten point five percent. Wow! Wow! Right, that's a that's a moving market. Um, Gridley up nine point four percent over the same time last year. Uh, now here's here's one where it's a little more stagnant. Uh, Lake Elmo down one point one percent. But I mean, there's not as much inventory there, so you know, and, and the and the uh, average price or median price is four hundred and sixty-eight thousand. More of your right? specialty buyer, yeah. Exactly. Um, Mendota Heights up ten point two percent. Wow. Yeah, four hundred and twenty-four thousand. Some beautiful homes in that area. And I have more cities I'd love to go through. Um, okay, real quick, uh, Minneapolis uh, condo market up ten point. Three uh, percent. Yeah, St. Paul yeah. condo market up seven point nine percent. Yeah, so uh, tons more cities in there. Uh, BricksTwinCities.com under publications, you can download that along with the Smart Home Buyer Smart Seller book. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks, guys, for coming in. Thank you. We'll Thank see you, you next week. Sounds good. Fire Lake up 11%. Wow. Richfield down to 13 <coughs> days on market. Holy cow. Good luck. That's down 17%. Yeah, in comparison to like Lake Minnetonka area, uh, it's actually a plus plus on days on market, 45 days. Huh. You know, and this is kind of what I'm seeing out there, and, and I'm, I'm waiting for the shift to happen because the – Four hundred to six hundred thousand dollar market has been pretty stagnant right. over the last few years, hmm. but there's got to be upward pressure from yep. that two to three three. I mean, even this year, three hundred to four hundred seems to be moving very fast. Um, so I, I think we're going to see this kind of bubble pushing that probably this year. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be the year that the starts the shift. Change. Um, because I mean, you can't have pressure on that lower market without, without it uh, affecting the ones above it yeah, eventually. Yeah, no doubt. So, um, let's see here. You know, one thing I, I like that you mentioned is having skin in the game. Yes. You know, in, in this market where you have to be strategic, I think doing your homework, and we talk about this a lot in our, our home buying seminar, uh, doing your homework and hiring the right people to work for you. And, and hiring a realtor to have some skin in the game because it's not just writing an offer. It's not just listing your home. You know, this is, we're talking about big money here and, mm -hmm. and this is a big, big transaction. So when you yeah. say those words, I have skin in the game, totally. or appraisal guarantee, that to a buyer and a seller, is, those are, that's a major thing. It's huge. It's absolutely yeah. huge. I mean, yeah. it goes so far in a multiple offer situation. Yeah, absolutely. That agent is willing to put up their funds. Yeah. Uh, listing agent and sellers are just like that's amazing you right know? who does that i mean i haven't been around that table and <laughs> at that conversation but i imagine that's what's happening anyway yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know um we didn't touch on this one but like inspection guarantees yeah mm. right now, i i've we've been hearing um from and, and you know i think adam and danny were the one who kind of started putting that out there mm -hmm. i don't remember for sure mm -hmm. uh but uh, I, I was a little apprehensive, I'm not going to lie, um, because I've always done the take it or leave it inspection, mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of like, hey, we're not we're not going to uh, uh, pick apart. But I do, I mean, this new uh, inspection guarantee. Hey, we're only going after deal breakers. Deal breakers, right? Yep. Exactly. It's essentially a deal breaker type inspection. Uh huh. And 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 it, it's basically 
a conversation, and this is a conversation I have with, with every buyer, regardless if I'm using this, but it's like, you're going in after life safety stuff. You're not going to go in and, you know, like I say in the class, uh, you're not going to buy a 1968 Mustang and say, well, it doesn't meet today's code, so you need to put in shoulder harnesses and airbags, yep. okay? Right. Where's the power steering? Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm actually submitting an offer on a house today uh, uh, where, you know, kind of the a, a boogeyman inspector scared the previous buyers nice. to walk away <laughs> from this awesome house yep. because the windows didn't meet today's code. Oh boy, mm. it's a 1950s <laughs> mid-century modern. Of course, of course. it's not going to meet today's code, right. right? And what city is that in? Oh, um, it's like Arden Hills or something. Ah, hmm. nice. Huh. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just. A, a, oh yeah, and then and then the other was that it, it didn't have grounded outlet outlets. It had it was two prong outlets. Of course, you could see that it was two prong outlets. Right. You know, right. yeah. the two prong outlet isn't a safety concern. I mean, think about how many things do you have that plug in on two prongs? Right, right. It's the three prong outlet that isn't grounded that's right. the safety concern. Yes. Yes. Now that's a safety thing. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, to to bring to a a seller that you're not going to nitpick on stupid stuff Ugh, it goes is so far it goes a long mm-hmm. ways yeah. and um you know and 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 t- i'm not saying that you don't as a buyer sit there and go oh i, I want to get as much as i can <laughs> you know as far as getting stuff fixed up but you also have to come from the perspective of what's reasonable yep i mean your inspection report should be your to-do checklist right when you buy your home you're buying a used house right? exactly right? exactly you get it checked out by a mechanic, just like you would a used car type of thing. Your inspector, right? You don't yeah. usually go buy a used car and be like, "Ooh, there's a eighth of an inch of wear on those tires." <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I need all new tires. All right. <laughs> That'd um, be nice, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, so I mean, there, there's a lot of creative ways as buyers out there in a very competitive market, whether it's the appraisal guarantee, inspection guarantee, um, escalation clauses, that you can actually save money. These I mean, will help you. Having a conversation with the listing agent and building that rapport, it goes so far. We just had – Libby just won one that we were not the highest offer, but we were more than willing to meet their closing date, mm-hmm. and that meant the world to them. It's just you know, <laughs> just having some communication. It goes so far. Yep. You know. Huge difference. Well, I don't have anything else, I think. Thanks for coming on, Mike. It was fun. Fun right. times. It's a great Thanks show. Thanks for coming in. Yep, Thank, thank you for you. having us. Bye, Facebook. Have a good day. <laughs>